Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and after about a week on the surface, the Chinese Space Agency has published the landing video from the Chang'e 4 spacecraft. And actually, it's pretty marvellous, and I wanted to talk through it, because people have been posting this around, and there's a, a number of cool things about it, but uh, I, I took the video, that I, the best video I could find. Now, the original video is recorded at 10 frames per second. Uh, I managed to find a 1080p quality version of it, although it is a square video. But I also then applied something called Butterflow. So what that does is it performs frame interpolation. So I've smoothed the video out to make it a little clearer and a little cooler. Anyway, to provide some context, this is a map of the far side of the moon. It's an orthographic projection, which means, of course, we get some uh, angle issues here. But the space probe is moving south across the moon. So you've got to understand that some of these things are uh, reversed. But it is currently flying over this area here. This is the von Karman crater. And if I zoom in, you can actually see that at the top and the, the left, there is this white area. That is the depression formed by these two craters. And uh, around the middle, there's two smaller craters that are moving. And the one on the left is this large one, which is about two kilometers. And the one on the right is this little one, which is about 1.3 kilometers. And as you zoom in, you start to see there's a whole bunch of other craters and these provide context. Now look for these two white spots, those are near the bottom of the frame. The spacecraft at this time is decelerating rapidly. The spacecraft is basically flying over in an orbit and then it very, very quickly slows from essentially orbital velocity to a hover. That's what it's doing right now. It's firing its uh, engine and it's going to perform active hazard avoidance maneuvers on the way down. The camera, by the way, has a 30 degree field of view, I believe. That's what the, the paper I saw mentioned that, so you can get an idea of it's quite, it's narrower than say the field of view of a cell phone, but it's obviously much wider than the field of view of say a traditional telescope or something that would be used on a spacecraft. So yeah, you can see the two white dots and then you can see these three craters and then you see the large crater which is about two kilometers apart. Uh, uh, across. And this is kind of important because, of course, nobody knows what these features are. It's very hard to figure out the sizes. Now, you see that the uh, at the bottom of the screen is telling us that it is adjusting. That means it's killed most of its lateral velocity. At this point, it became really kind of hard to, to track it in real time. So, good news is, here's a bunch I prepared earlier. And it turns out if you flip everything upside down, it becomes a lot easier to see which craters correspond to which. Now, that crater that's at about the 9 o'clock position, that is about 300 meters across at this point. And based upon its size, we know that the spacecraft must be at about two kilometers up and now it is descending down. At this point, it's using its cameras to try and figure out where it's going to land. But once it gets close, it's going to use a LIDAR to scan the area. By this point, it's actually reached an altitude where it can see the place that it's going to land, although it probably hadn't figured out where it was going to land. It's descending at a rate of probably about 60 kilometers per hour. Uh, you know, the last couple of kilometers. So, you know, it's at the altitude that many light aircraft fly out. So if you've ever flown a light aircraft and looked out, that's the kind of altitude we're talking about here. These craters are now, you know, tens of meters across rather than hundreds of meters across. That camera rotation, by the way, corresponds to the whole spacecraft turning. And of course, it turns away from the target because it has to slide itself over. Once it gets down below a certain altitude, it will stop rotating the spacecraft back and forth for steering, and it will then use translational thrusters for um, you know, descent. So this triplet of craters that are coming into the middle of the view now, those are about 20 meters across, and those are the ones that we can actually see in the, uh, if, in the landed photos. So this is now just over a thousand feet off the ground of the lunar surface and it's heading down into an area that the visual system and the radar seems to think that is a pretty clear and flat area for it to touch down on. Uh, some of these craters now are but a few meters across. So some of these are the size of cars, but at this altitude, it's going to stop. And when it stops, it's then going to scan the area using LIDAR. It's going to zap a laser all over the surface collect details on the topography. So there you see it says hovering 
and then it's going to make a decision as to where to land and it's going to pick this point in between these three craters here. So I mean what's been amazing all the way down is you saw that some of the first craters we saw were a couple of kilometers across. We were inside a crater which was 180 kilometers across. These large craters here are tens, these small ones are less than a meter across. It's like a fractal thing. As you get closer there's more and more craters showing up on the moon because without an atmosphere to stop impactors from reaching the surface you get the entire range of impact energies from things that are a you know the stick of dynamite to all the way up to things that literally almost tore the moon asunder and there we go, safely landed on the moon. The, the engine, of course, just continues to outgas for a bit, I guess. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure what, what it takes to shut it down, but clearly it's not running at full power. Uh, of course, you know, as we were descending, you don't see the engine thrust, you know, the engine um, exhaust, because, of course, it's expanding into a vacuum and is expanding very wide instantly, so it the pressure drops so quickly that the exhaust is essentially transparent. But there we go. You know, that's like, you know, those features are, are you know, millimetres across there. That's the most detailed picture you're going to see of the surface. Of course, it now has a rover that's going to go driving across the moon. So yeah, I think it was great. A lot of people had a lot of questions and I, I think I answered them all. And obviously now the rover's going to go around. Actually, the rover has been doing a lot of sitting still because uh, it was local day, like midday. And that at that point, it's got a lot of thermal issues. So it was going to wait until the sun gets lower on the horizon, apparently, before it starts really doing its stuff. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.